Okay, so first of all, double click on the axes to open up the formatting bar, then go to the number formatting and change it from general to number. Then change the negative numbers to red and you'll see the axis now has two different colours and that is because of this red here in square brackets. But you don't have to have this just for negative numbers, you can type in your own custom number format. So if I select this axis here and go to the number formatting again, I will type in here in square brackets, red, then in another set of square brackets, I'll put greater than 60. After that, I will put the number formatting that I want. So I will type in general, then semicolon, and then general again, and add. And now you'll see in the axes, all of the numbers greater than 60 have turned red. So this first set of brackets here tells Excel what colour you want to make the numbers. Then the second set here tells Excel which numbers you want to make red. Then the bit outside of the square brackets here tells Excel what you want the number formatting of the values greater than 60 to be. So I have put general number formatting in here, but you can also have normal number formatting, which is represented by a zero. And if I add that, you'll see that it doesn't change the way it looks. Then the semicolon here separates the first statement from the second statement. And all the second statement does is tell Excel what you want the number formatting of everything else to be. So if I remove this, you'll see all of the numbers disappear because it needs a number formatting to show the numbers. But I can also make it normal number formatting and the numbers will reappear again. Now, if you want only one of the numbers to be a different colour, you can say equals to, and then you'll see that only the number 60 is now in red. And you can also say greater than or equal to 60, and that will make all of the numbers greater than 60 red, including the number 60 itself. Now, there are eight named colours that you can use in this way in Excel. So, for example, I will type a second statement in here, which will be cyan in square brackets, then all of the values less than 60, and then zero semicolon, and then zero again, and add. And this will make all of the numbers less than 60 turn cyan. Now, in total, Excel has 56 colours that you can use. The first eight are these named colours here that I was just talking about, but there are other colours that don't have a name assigned to them, but you can get them by typing in their number. So, for example, I can change this here to colour 43 and add, and this changes the lower numbers to this green colour. You need to type colour in the American way, so without a U, and you also don't need a space in between the word colour and the number. Now you are limited to having only two statements in the formatting bar, not including the last statement here, which means you can have up to three colours. If I change this here to 70 and this here to 40 and then add that, you'll see there is now three colours. There's the red and the green, but also the black, which is the default text colour. And you can change this by going to text options and change the text fill to a different colour. So that is how you have up to three different colours in the axes. Now, if you want the colours to alternate, 
then you need to create a secondary axis and overlap it with the primary axis. To do this, you'll need to put in a second series of data. So I'm just going to copy my original data and then paste it in. Then select the new series and change it to the secondary axis. And I will also add a second horizontal axis to this as well. Then select the new horizontal axis and change the place where it crosses the vertical axis. It defaults to the maximum value, but you can select a specific value. If I change this to zero, you can see it moves to the other side. To get them to actually overlap, you'll need to put 0.01 and enter. Now I just need to do some formatting on this secondary axis here to get it to look the way I want. So I'll change the major units to 10 and I'll also increase the font size to 12 then change the font color to a light gray color. And now you'll see I have the colors alternating. So only the more important numbers are in the darker black color and everything else is gray. To select the primary axes again, you have to go to axes options and select the vertical value axes here. You can't just click on it anymore because the two axes are now overlapping. Now you do have to have the font size be the same for both axes. You can see if I increase the font, the numbers no longer overlap properly and you can see them underneath. But you can have the numbers in bold to make them stand out more. Also, you may want to change the axis fill to be white. If I change it to a stupid color, you can see that it fills in the background behind the number. And if I change this to white, this makes it less obvious if the numbers aren't overlapping perfectly. Now, there's a couple of last formatting things to change. So I no longer need this axis here, so I'm gonna delete it. And also, if you want to get rid of the secondary series that you added, you can change it to no line and also no marker. And then we are back to the blue line again. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to get the font of the axis labels in Excel to be different colors. You can do it either using custom number formatting or by overlapping the secondary and primary axes. And that is everything.